operations of the governing body by the public, and except as otherwise described by law, does limit the public to the observation of the actions and discussions of the governing body at all its regular and special meetings. So moved. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Cripe? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. At this time, please join us in a salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll be taking a roll call now uh, for the official start. Ms. Adams? Here again. Ms. Cripe? Here. Mr. Daffis? Here. Mr. DeLuca? Here. Ms. Engel? Here. It's weird that E is the last letter. It is, isn't it? That's what I'm thinking. I was a W and I picked E purposefully and now last oh. again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, happy new year, everyone. And thank you for joining us on this first day of a new year. Uh, and what a remarkable beginning with this balmy weather and beautiful day. Uh, so it has become our custom at our reorganization meeting to dedicate our meeting to a local community group, organization, nonprofit, association that has significantly contributed to community life and civic engagement and civic life in Maplewood and South Orange. And we are absolutely delighted and honored especially in light of their remarkable 90th anniversary to honor uh, today um, the South Orange Maplewood Adult School. Uh, we have a wonderful proclamation and we have some members of the adult school with us who, who we welcome to uh, say a few things after I read the proclamation into the record. The proclamation says that the South Orange Maplewood Adult School Association is a New Jersey nonprofit corporation. And as I mentioned, it's celebrating its 90th anniversary in 2023. The association provides affordable and innovative education to inspire, engage, empower, and connect with the inclusive and diverse communities of South Orange and Maplewood. And it was honored by the Library of Congress in 2000 as a local legacy and is currently the oldest nonprofit adult school in the state of New Jersey. The South Orange Maplewood Adult School has presented nationally acclaimed scholars, poets, journalists, visual and performing artists, and it has created special programming, including, among others, the Eva Samo Lecture, the Red Path event, Likely Stories, Children's Summer Program, the Hammingson Literary Sh Showcase, just to name a few. It annually honors a deserving member or members of the community with the Gus and Thelma Sickles Lifelong Learning Award. The South Orange Maplewood Adult School Association has grown in its scope of annual offerings from four to as many as 250 classes. That's remarkable. And events serving over 2,500 people from ages five to 90, 90 plus. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Dean Daffis, mayor of the Township of Maplewood, and, the, and on behalf of the Maplewood Township Committee, hereby declare and celebrate the 90th anniversary of the South Orange Maplewood Adult School in the Township of Maplewood, and I call this observance to the attention of all our residents. Congratulations, Adult School. Thank you. So Bonnie, I, I see we have you uh, converted over from attendee to panelist. Good morning, thank you, or good afternoon rather. Thank you for joining us again. Happy New Year, congratulations. Uh, please share with us your remarks. Well, thank you so much, Mayor Daffis, and um, Happy New Year to everybody. I'm really honored that the adult school is being recognized in this manner by the Maplewood Township Committee. So thank you so much. On behalf of the board, um, I'd really like to 
Um, thank you again for this opportunity to share a little bit of our rich history with you. The adult school was founded in 1933 during the Great Depression by Dr. Ross Runnels, who was principal of what was then Maplewood Junior High School. The stated purpose at that time was to fulfill the desires of adults to continue old interests and hobbies and to develop new ones in a rapidly changing world. 90 years later, the adult school continues to meet the challenges of our rapidly changing world. We are a community-based school, as you noted, for ages five to 90 plus. We're dedicated to offering um, opportunities for lifelong learning. And we offer both in-person and remote learning. We've expanded the reaches of our programming to outside of our immediate communities through that remote learning. Recent programming has included a lecture on Edward Hopper, discounted tickets to hit Broadway shows, a memoir writing class and ESL classes. And we also hosted a sold out cabaret featuring local stars of the Broadway stage. Look for the SOMAS catalog in your mailboxes um, coming this month. In spring of 2023, we look forward to offering um, two exciting events in particular. On March 27th, we will be hosting the Best of Likely Stories our biennial live event where theater professionals give voice to short stories. And on April 27th, Maplewood resident Nancy Solomon will receive the Somas Gus and Thelma Sickles Award for Lifelong Learning. Nancy is a senior reporter and the founding managing editor of New Jersey Public Radio. She's a Peabody Award winner and author of the podcast Dead End, a New Jersey political murder mystery. And we're very excited to present this award to her. Both of those events will be at the Woodland. Um, you may or may not know that SOMAS is a nonprofit organization and tuition does not cover all the costs associated with offering classes. I'd like to thank all of our donors and sponsors whose generosity helps keep us operating and able to offer affordable programming to meet the needs of our communities. I'd also like to thank our creative and dedicated staff and teachers our current and past trustees for your commitment to fulfilling the mission of SOMAS to provide opportunities for lifelong learning. And most of all, I wanna thank our students and anyone who's ever taken a class, attended a lecture or gone to a trip or an event with the adult school. You're the reason that we exist and the reason we keep growing. For up-to-date information, please subscribe to our weekly newsletter and like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I hope you'll join us at an upcoming event or class to help us celebrate our 90th anniversary. And once again, thank you very much to the Maplewood Township Committee. Oops, I was muted. Thank you very much and congratulations again. Are there uh, members from the Township Committee, my colleagues who wish to say anything? I know some of you have may, may have attended uh, some classes or taken a course or attended one of the events that Bonnie recounted, anyone? I just want to say, I'm no, sorry. No, go, go ahead. ahead. Okay, I just want to say thank you for everything that you contribute to this community. I know as a parent of a child who's gone through many a summer is there. Um, if it wasn't for the adult school, we wouldn't have had a place to put our child. And the lessons she learned, the crafts she learned how to handle, the, the confidence she now has in using her computer, I directly can uh, attribute to the, the leaders and, the, and the, the teachers that you brought in. So thank you for everything that you guys continue to do. And someday, someday I'm going to get to that Beanner's ukulele class that I've been signed up for forever. <laughs> it's gonna happen. One day, thank you. So I'd just like to extend my congratulations also and thank you for all the work. Um, my old neighbors, Jane and Lee Jasper, I know were very um, involved in um, the adult school for many years and I miss them terribly, but I know the Sickles and I remember all the names, Eva Samo, and it's so nice that they're all um, still remembered through the adult school and um, keeping their names alive. So, um, but thank you for everything. It's a fabulous, fabulous organization. I appreciate all the dedication from the people who run it. Indeed, and we want to extend our thanks to Emily uh, Zacharias. I see that she's attending our meeting today. Hey there, Emily, happy new year to you, and thank you for bringing this to our attention and for our consideration uh, at our uh, reorganization dedication today. Uh, truly, truly uh, wonderful idea, and thank you 
uh, for reaching out to us about it. So with that, uh, you're welcome to stay with the, for the rest of our reorganization meeting. And we bid you a great 2023. Thank you uh, so much. Okay, wonderful. Next, we're going to honor the memory of those we've lost in Maplewood, um, members who were active in community life. And some of them were worked for the township, others were volunteers. Um, and I'm gonna read their names and, and say a little bit about them as we know it. Uh, and they're gonna be in the order of their passing throughout the year. Eileen Klein, community volunteer, wife of former Maplewood Vice Mayor Robert Klein. Brian Corrigan, Maplewood volunteer in the Recreation Department in particular. Nathan Jacobson, former Maplewood Planning Board attorney, community volunteer. Wilbert Pitt, Maplewood School Crossing Guard. Michael Vendola, retired Maplewood sewer foreman, Department of Public Works, longtime Maplewood resident. Dr. Elizabeth Crandall, longtime chair of the Maplewood Recreation Advisory Committee, YMCA Board of Trustees member, longtime Maplewoodian. Melissa Hodgkins, community volunteer, Hilton Neighborhood Association active member. Patricia Bishop, retired township employee in the finance department, Maplewood resident for 70 years. Roland Hayes, father of former township committee member, India Larrier. Of course, our dearly departed chief of police, Jimmy Duvall, Maplewood police chief, 31 year township employee. Harold Bobro, member of the Maplewood Emergency Management Committee, longtime resident and volunteer. Dennis Pr Prusinowski, retired Maplewood Department of Public Works employee. Rosemary Howlett, longtime Maplewood resident. Antoinette De Palma, mother of Annette De Palma, the director of our community development department and the township's prosecutor. And last but not least, Shirley Mazone, mother of Beverly Mazone, technical assistant, Maplewood Building Department. May their memories be a blessing, provide strength to the families. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, members of the Township Committee, the oath of office to uh, Ms. Deborah Engel was administered by the Township Clerk in person here at the Maplewood Town Hall approximately one hour ago. So uh, now I would turn uh, our program over to Ms. Engel to make uh, her remarks. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us here at this Root Organization meeting. Happy New Year. Um, thanks to those who were able to make it to the swearing in in person a little while ago. I am um, proud and honored to be part of this historic moment where women take over the majority of the Maplewood Township Committee. I am so excited to join fellow working mothers, Nancy Adams, Community, along with our non female members, Dean's office, and Vic DeLuca. But I'm really excited to be here with you all today. Um, there are a couple other working mothers that I would like to thank, including um, my two co campaign managers, Erin Scherzer and Malia Herman, who I could not have managed through this year without. I am grateful for their support and dedication and friendship always, um, as well as Kirsten Dean, a graphic designer extraordinaire who worked so hard on all of the campaign branding. Um, I'd also like to thank Vic DeLuca for um, stepping in as my campaign treasurer and paying all the bills and all of your guidance that you've given me throughout this year, and as well as when I was a business owner. And Dean Daffis, for being a cheerleader and a support and for always reminding me that representation matters. 
Um, I'd like to thank the Maplewood Dems, especially the GOTV team, Kathy Leventhal, Jerry Leventhal, and Rebecca Shear. It's been a great year with you, and Ian Grodman and Garnett Hall, who lead us with such passion, and I'm so excited to be involved with that organization. And then, of course, my family. Um, Matt, you provide such a strong foundation for our children as their mom goes off and does crazy things like start new businesses and run for public office. And I couldn't do any of this without your support. And my three daughters um, have taught me what it means to be brave. And I'm just grateful um, to have them and to be a role model for them. Um, earlier today, I did take the oath of office on the Jewish Bible, um, since I felt weird doing it on a Christian Bible, having grown up Jewish. And honestly, before today, I didn't even know that there was a thing as a Jewish Bible. So I learned that it is the Torah um, in a book written in Hebrew and an English translation. And it was particularly meaningful to me as this year, 2023, my family embarks on um, my oldest daughter's 13th birthday, leading the way to her bat mitzvah. So we will pass the Torah from generation to generation, just as my grandparents passed it to my parents and I passed it to, and they passed it to me, I'll be passing it down to my children. And it was really meaningful, me, meaningful for me to take the oath on the Torah, especially as I've been thinking about what it is about the Jewish traditions and values that I grew up with, what I wanna be able to pass on to my children this year as we start our own journey. And I realized while working on the speech for today and also along the campaign trail, that the thing I've taken most out of my Jewish education is the strong sense of community and the importance of community and the importance of building inclusive communities. And so that's what I want to take to my term on the Maplewood Township Committee, is to ensure that we're always building inclusive communities here in Maplewood. I want to listen and learn from all of you residents, our elected officials, our hardworking township staff, everybody who lives here. I want to provide inclusive services for our community and look at how we can uh, make mental health supports and evaluations and preventative measures more available and affordable to all of our residents. I want to ensure that all of our programming is inclusive, particularly towards our special needs community who often feels left out and they can't participate. We wanna make sure that everybody feels welcome in Maplewood. I wanna create stronger bonds with, this, with the Board of Education because the issues that are affecting the families in our schools are issues affecting our residents from traffic to the lack of af uh, uh, aftercare and, and affordable childcare. These are problems that are affecting our community. And most importantly, I wanna lead with empathy and remember that everybody who lives in Maplewood deserves to feel loved and safe here. And I'm really proud to be able to serve with my colleagues and to make Maplewood the beautiful community that we all love. So thank you so much for putting your trust and faith in me. And I can't wait to be a member of this township committee. Thank you so much. Members of the Township Committee, I now call for the nomination for Chair of the Township Committee for the year 2023. I nominate Dean Daffis. I second the nomination of Dean Daffis. Are there any other nominations for the Chair of the Township Committee for the year 2023? Hearing that, I move the nominations be closed. I second the motion. Roll call next. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Cripe? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. I declare Dean Daffis duly elected chair of the Township Committee for the year 2023. Thank you. Thank you to my colleagues. I'm deeply honored and humbled by your confidence and faith in me. I will continue leading us with the strength, conviction, commitment, and collaboration that you've become accustomed for me. And I will continue being our greatest representative externally to our elected colleagues and partners in government. I wanna take this opportunity to also thank our Maplewood Dems, without whom I would not be here at all especially Chairman Grodman, Vice Chairwoman Hill, and to all Democratic district leaders. I'm 
proud of our tremendous growth this past year and of our exceptional performance in getting out the vote here locally and for our new congressional representative, Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill. We really hit so many home runs politically, truly stood our ground in Essex, quite impressively too, I might add, especially when compared to our sister towns in the county with larger populations and greater resources. And of notable note, really, and special gratitude to some of our newer female district leaders who really moved us forward this year and made us stronger as a Democratic committee, including, welcome aboard again, Ms. Deborah Engel, Becky Shear, Aaron Scherzer, Nada Alzubi. And of course, we also had some of our longtime uh, district leaders, former TC member and deputy mayor, Kathy Leventhal, and former township committee member, India Larrier. Ms. Engel, welcome aboard, my friend. Congratulations on your impressive election and for making history in Maplewood. With your oath of office today, we are now, as you remarked already, officially a diverse majority female governing body. That's terrific. Further strengthening our inclusivity and pushing us forward. May you find public service as rewarding and fulfilling as we do. To all of our residents out there, happy, happy new year, everyone. Whatever the new year has in store for us, I'm proud to report that the township is prepared to meet it. We are strong, we are thriving, we are prepared. As we head into our fiscal 2023 budget preparations, we are in much better footing financially than we were this time last year. We've paid off significant debt service, including 2012 and 2017 refunding bonds, saving 1.5 million and 2.3 million respectively in 2023 debt service payments. Interest income has rebounded from pre-pandemic figures, thankfully, to over 250,000. And we're seeing our FEMA reimbursements coming in. We've already received nearly 800,000 and IDA insurance payments of over 700,000 and still have outstanding claims. FEMA claims of over 2.3 million and IDA insurance payments of roughly 1.4 million. We collected nearly a half a million dollars in cannabis free fee revenue double what we anticipated. Of course, we didn't foresee that the state health benefit premiums rates would increase dramatically at 22% effective today. This is something we're going to have to figure out how to accommodate. But all things considered, we are cautiously optimistic about being able to adopt and produce a 2023 budget that is fair, adequate in meeting our needs, sincere and far more reasonable in tax burden when compared to some recent budgets the past few years. We were successfully resourceful in securing federal and state grants, over 1.3 million in fact, to fund critical pedestrian safety enhancements along walking routes to schools, safety and streetscape improvements, and drainage improvements and road renovations. This includes $480,000 in improving over 30 crosswalks with solar powered beacons. We went after Essex County Community Development block rides to upgrade over 26 ramps at various intersections. And we recently announced applying for an electric ADA accessible senior bus. We promised you last year, Maplewood, that 2022 would focus heavily on infrastructure improvements and public works. And on that, I'm grateful to announce that we have delivered nearly three miles of township roadway paved, extensive drainage improvements throughout the township completed, the design and construction of not one, but two New Jersey Department of Transportation municipal aid projects. We restriped municipal parking lots, completed the fueling station at DPW, We've installed various speed humps throughout town as the result of traffic calming requests and evaluations. We designed and installed EV chargers and more of those are coming throughout town. 
and negotiated with PSENG the full width paving and restoration of roads affected by the gas, the gas main upgrades throughout town. We planted over 200 trees and gave away hundreds of seedlings to residents themselves to plant trees on their properties. We pruned or removed dangerous trees throughout the township, we, and we made countless repairs to our fields and our recreation facilities, including the lighting and other necessary repairs at both DeHart Field and Memorial Park tennis courts, and several successful treatments to the playing fields. Of course, leaf collection was even bigger this year than last year, bulk pickup and drop off, and our library reconstruction is up and running, just to name a few. 2022 marked our finally returning, the, turning the corner rather from COVID, rebuilding, expanding, and returning to full steam in services and programming. Most of our cultural heritage celebrations and signature events were back in a very big way. Our pool memberships rebounded, and we've, we're especially proud of our swim lessons pilot that allowed even non-members the opportunity to learn an important life skill. We hope to expand on that to provide more access and to make the pool more accessible and affordable to all. Most of our recreation camps return to full capacity and we aim to expand access to our recreational programming overall as well. Pickleball, the fastest growing sport in America is now available in Maplewood at our Walter Park tennis courts and a forthcoming online reservation system will enhance pickleball and the, and the tennis experience for our residents. We continued strengthening our services to seniors and focusing on age friendliness in all of our decisions. The Soma Two Towns for All Ages shared service initiative is stronger than when it began. And now Maplewood and South Orange have their respective Soma Two Town coordinators who work together. Speaking of shared services, our fire merger is complete and operational. We entered into a shared service for health department services with South Orange. Shared services are, after all, hallmarks of efficiency, of good government, good government and better quality in services. The health department launched our crisis intervention social worker initiative, which has been very impactful in identifying previously unknown vulnerabilities and in diverting them from law enforcement to necessary case management and support. This year, we aim to expand the pilot to add an additional social worker. And our goal is to eventually have an independent mobile unit. Our health staff performed hundreds of homebound COVID vaccinations and introduced their inaugural health fair for necessary health screenings and preventative outreach. We also remained leaders in sustainability, achieving silver recognition from Sustainable Jersey. And we furthered many of our green initiatives, including expanding our township-wide township compost pilot. The CEA, the Sustainable Essex Alliance, concluded its second successful contract with an alternative energy supplier in September, again enabling participating residents to save money on electricity supply while doubling the renew renewable energy provided by PSE&G. Maplewood continues as the lead agency, along with our municipal partners, South Orange, Montclair, Verona, Livingston, Glen Rock, and Glen Ridge. We continue to test the energy market through competitive bidding for a third favorable contract. Of course, starting tomorrow, we've talked about this and we've sent out a lot of notices and we'll be doing further education in the weeks ahead. Dual streaming recycling begins in our township and in South Orange. And our gas powered leaf blower ban goes into effect today. We bolstered our communications with you res residents out there, introducing new and improved user-friendly website, digitized many of our services through GovPilot, and we're soon to introduce SMS notifications for immediate notifications about important happenings in town. 
we celebrated the openings of many new businesses, further underscoring the vitality and strength of our business districts. And we gave out cannabis licenses to women and BIPOC owned businesses. We also ushered in a new outdoor dining seasonal program that is equitable, uniform, and regulated. And in the village, we finally received official notice of our historic designation on the state and national registers of historic places. Duran Hedden held a great exhibit highlighting that and celebrating our town centennial. If you haven't seen it, it's definitely worth the visit. Our commitment to inclusionary, affordable, smart, and transit-oriented development continued with the approval of a redevelopment project at the former Gleason's project and a recently announced proposed development at Yale Corner that may provide first-time home ownership opportunity. While home sales normalized a bit from the frenzy of the past couple of years, the town remains widely popular with in-movers and existing homeowners continue to improve their homes. We issued, in fact, over 2,000 permits, completed over 3,000 building inspections, and over 3,000 property maintenance inspections. In the new year, one of our main focuses, of course, will be the introduction of and adoption of our new master plan. Thus far, our public workshops and stakeholder meetings have revealed some common themes in terms of connections, better connections, in terms of transportation and mobility, quality of life necessary enhancements, including affordability, and resiliency to combat climate change. Underlying everything is the concept of equity which we believe is an overarching theme and will be the foundation of our new master plan. We had a major loss this past year. Unexpectedly, we lost our chief of police. One of the hardest things I've ever had to do was to deliver his eulogy in front of his family and our men and women in blue to properly honor and remember him. But we didn't miss a beat. We needed to show our leadership and our strength, and we quickly appointed his number two, Al Sally, who is now our chief of police and who made history in becoming our new chief of police, our first African-American chief. And I'm delighted to announce here, in case you haven't heard, on Tuesday night at our first official township committee meeting of the new year, we will be appointing as Deputy Chief Nahima Malloy, also making history as the first African-American woman to be appointed as a Deputy Chief in the Township of Maplewood. We do recognize that we've been challenged by recent crime waves that communities everywhere are facing. It's shaken our confidence and tainted our perception of safety but make no mistake, we are taking this head on with better strategies in patrol, in leveraging technology, such as license plate readers, and working with our residents, sharing ring camera feeds, theirs to us, and strategizing all around in different operating procedures that have all already shown uh, to be producing good results. We will continue strengthening our relationships with the community and talking to residents and educating them about how they can empower themselves as well in crime prevention. We remain safer as a community than we ever have been. In the coming weeks, I will be launching a mayor's wellness campaign to promote greater health and wellness in our community and to further the health department's soon to be shared community health assessment action plan. Our plan this year is to achieve gold in health rating from Sustainable Jersey. Only two other municipalities in New Jersey have done so. So the race is on to join them.
We will continue to look at areas where redevelopment may be necessary as an economic development opportunity. And we're going to be focusing on housing, housing equity, housing affordability. We have some things already in place that need to be better marketed. For instance, providing more communication and technical assistance in accessory dwelling units. And as we look to adopt a new master plan, looking at some rezoning where that's necessary. For instance, expanding our multifamily zoning in town. Our success is real and it's deeply rooted in the professionalism and dedication of our impressive staff, the leadership of our department heads, all of them exemplary, all around the best municipal team in New Jersey. It's people like Public Works and Engineering Department Director Paul Kittner, Superintendent of Public Works, Cesar Riccardi, some of our engineers on staff, including Hussam Zaden, Health Officer Candace Davenport, Nurse Anna Markarova, and their impressive team, including Talia Jeffers, our Vulnerabilities Outreach Director, Community Services Director Melissa Mancuso, and her big team, Nick, Jamie, Denise, Ed, Finance Director Joe Koloje, and his number two, the impressive and hardworking April Miller. Of course, the tenacious, the one and only, the incomparable township clerk, Liz Fritzen, who is our resident facing customer service powerhouse, processing voluminous applications, licenses, permits, all while running these public meetings and our elections. And now she's joined by a new impressive member, Amari Allah, our deputy clerk, who is quick, quickly emerging as a vital support system to the services of Maplewood. Township Interim Administrator Greg Schuster and Assistant Administrator Bailey Barnett, who oversee everything at every level, keeping it all together and constantly troubleshooting along the way. Library Director Sarah Lester and her exemplary team. Community, community Development Director and our local prosecutor, the one and only Annette De Palma. Our Courts Administrator and Director Ryan Bank, Bancroft. Our Social Services, Social Workers, Senior Adult Coordinators, everyone. Our Public Safety Leads. Our Township Council, Mr. Roger Desiderio. They are the ones who make everything possible. They are our unsung heroes. We owe our resident volunteers deep gratitude as well because our success is also, also deeply, deeply rooted in them as well. We owe a deep thanks to our hundreds of community volunteers who serve on countless boards and committees and push us to do better and help us launch new necessary programs and services. Thank you. Maplewood, it's going to be a great year. I just know it. Stay engaged. Stay continued working together with us. It remains a great privilege and honor to serve you, Maplewood. I'm grateful for your support, all of my friendships out there, and I remain your steward in 2023 and beyond. Happy New Year and thank you. And now we have the election of deputy chair for 2023. Members of the Township Committee, I now call for the nomination of Deputy Chair of the Township Committee for the year 2023. I nominate Deborah Engel. I second the nomination of Deborah Engel. I move that the nominations be closed. I second that. I will do a roll call. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. 
Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Davis? Yes. I declare Deborah Engel duly elected deputy chair of the Township Committee for the year 2023. Congratulations. <clears throat> Ms. Fritzen, we have our first resolution. Uh, yes, Mayor, we do. Uh, we're up to uh, letter K, resolution 1-23, adopting the bylaws of the Township of Maywood. I move the resolution. I'll second it for possible discussion. I'm sorry, I missed that. I said I second it for possible discussion. I believe there might be some discussion on it, so. Sure, we can open it up to discussion. Go ahead, Ms. Adams. Um, actually, it's me. There was a conversation began um, oh. in regards to um, having a uh, change in the bylaws as far as the chair and deputy chair of the committee be two-year appointments, so we don't have to do the organization two times every single year. Um, I just personally feel it takes a lot more time than a year to get some stuff done. So having it where a person can be in place for two years to me is a better option than just having a one year that we renew every year. I think we need a, uh, Mayor, I think we need a ruling from our uh, attorney on whether that's legal. Um, our, uh, the ten, under the Township Committee form of government, we end the year on December 31st and can't carry it over. So it really would not be possible to appoint someone for two years because every year we change who the potentially could change who the composition is. And those people could very well be one of those two seats, either a mayor or a deputy mayor. And it's happened in the past that first time people have been mayors and first time people have been deputy mayors. So um, but mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, we should uh, get the input from our attorney on whether this is even possible. I don't think we should do it now. I think we should, you know, adopt this. We can always change it if it is. And you know, if we, if a majority of us uh, agrees to it, but I just don't think it's legal. I don't, uh, Ms. Craig, I don't, I just wanted a clarification. I don't think you meant to extend the term over one year, therefore, which is statutorily stated, but rather an uh, sort of an auto rotation that I know Correct. some of us have talked about and um, to avoid things like, you know, mayors who are mayor in the township committee form of government, it's an equal, it's a committee for a reason. And what has happened in the past in Maplewood is um, some mayors have served far longer without giving opportunity to other members of the committee to also serve as chair. Um, Bob Grasmere, uh, Mr. DeLuca, whereas their needs, the I think the thought was to try to open it up so that um, members of the township committee who get elected by the community have more of an opportunity to serve by implementing what other townships do, which is sort of an auto rotation, limiting the number of consecutive years someone could serve and having everybody rotate. That is more of my intent. Um, the idea around having new fresh voices on a regular rotation versus in general, same ones. But yes, I agree with, with uh, Mr. DeLuca that we should refer to our council. Is our council with us? I mean, as Mr. DeLuca stated, I think we, we need to have a discussion about this at a future township committee meeting. Yes, future closed one. Yeah, I don't believe he's here. I okay. think he is here, but it's not. Yeah, I think we had just talked okay. about it a couple of times over the last couple of years and it's never kind of moved. OK, just well, point out that the bylaws were changed a couple of years ago. It does say the chair shall serve for one year and not more than three consecutive years. Right. So we can always we can always amend we already have in place an, an agreement to uh, rotate the chair. Right, but not with regular rotation from equal opportunity for all five members. That has not happened. Well, in recent history, history that's happening, right? We had Mr. McGee, he uh, was the first one to usher in our new uh, bylaws, 
right after the long tenure of Mr. DeLuca as mayor. Um, and then, you know, I had an opportunity after his two years to, to be appointed as mayor. So I think that's what we've been doing in practice, but we can have a more fulsome discussion um, at another township committee meeting. Agreed. Um, Ms. Fritzen, could we have a roll call? I believe we had a um, both motions for the introduction of the bylaws, the adoption rather of yes, the bylaws. Yes, it was moved and seconded. Yep. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Bright? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Davis? Yes. Thank you. Uh, next, we're going to adopt our staff appointments for 2023. Before motions, I'd like to read them all into the record. Interim Township Administrator Greg Schuster, Assistant Township Administrator Bailey Barnett, Township Attorney, Attorney Roger Desiderio, Deputy Township Clerk Amari Allah, Chief Financial Officer jo Joseph Kologe, Public Defender Dennis Cleary, Public Defender Jermaine Mercer, Plumbing Subcode Official Raymond Keeley, Electrical Subcode Official William Christian, Court Administrator Ryan Bancroft, Interim Registrar, Registrar of Vital Statistics Jocelyn White, Deputy Registrar of Vital Statistics Elizabeth Fritzen, Director of Community Services Melissa Mancuso, Director of Community Development, Annette De Palma, Tax Searcher, Joseph Kologe, Custodian of Township Records, Elizabeth Fritzen, Deputy Custodian of Township Records, Chief Albert Sally, Deputy Custodian of Township Records, Fire Official Robert Conklin, Certifying Agent Pension Funds, Joseph Kologe, Fire Official Robert Conklin, American Disability Act Coordinator, Leonard Mendola, Township Engineer, Paul Kittner, Director of Public Works, Paul Kittner, Superintendent of Public Works, Cesar Riccardi, Construction Code Official, Leonard Mendola, Health Officer, Candace Davenport, Board of Health, Deborah Engel, Qualified Purchasing Agent, April Miller, Assistant Chief Financial Officer, April Miller, Tax Collector, Joseph Kologe, Deputy Tax Collector, Kristen Cordray, and Tax Assessor, Thomas DeCourt. Can I get a motion? Thank you, Mayor. I move that the appointment submitted by you be confirmed. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Uh, Mayor, uh, moving along, we're at uh, letter M. Resolution read by title, it's resolution 2-23, appointing municipal prosecutor Annette De Palma and assistant municipal prosecutor Gracia Pontulas. I move resolution number 2-23. I second the motion. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Daffis. Yes. <clears throat> Item N, resolution read by title, it's resolution number 3-23, adding tap into Soma and Village Green as electronic news sources to which notices and other matters are to be provided under the Open Public Meetings Act. I make a motion that we adopt um, resolution 323. I second that motion. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Davis? Yes. And uh, our final resolution is uh, read by title, resolution number 4-23, appointing municipal deputy emergency management coordinators including Police Chief Albert F. Sally and Police Detective Christopher Delias. I move the adoption of this resolution number 4-23. Second. 
Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kripe? Yes. Ms. Luca? Yes. Sengel? Yes. Mayor Davis? Yes. Members of the Township Committee, I now call for nominations for Township of Maplewood representative to the joint meeting of Essex and Union Counties for the year 2023. I nominate Dean Daffis. I second the nomination of Dean Daffis. I move the nominations be closed. I second the motion. Taking a roll call now, Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kripe? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. I declare Dean Daffis duly elected Maplewood representative to the joint meeting of Essex and Union Counties for the year 2023. Thank you, Ms. Ritson. Moving on to Board of School Estimate. Members of the Township Committee, it is necessary to also elect, elect three members, three members and one alternate of the Township Committee to represent the Township on the Board of School Estimate for the School District of South Orange and Maplewood in accordance with Chapter 232 of the Laws of 1953. I now call for nominations for the Board of School Estimate for the year 2023. Mayor, I nominate Dean Daffis, Nancy Adams, Deborah Engel to represent the township on the Board of School Estimate, and Jermaine Kripe as the alternate on the Board of School Estimate. I second the motion. I'm going to move the nominations be closed again. <laughs> I will second that motion again. <laughs> and I'll be taking a roll call. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kripe? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Uh, I declare Dean Daffis, Nancy Adams, Deborah Engel, and Jermaine Kripe as the alternate, duly elected members of the Board of School Estimate for the year 2023. Thank you, Ms. Bixson. Uh, and now we have our consent agenda, which is the 2023 appointments of standing committee uh, liaisons. And uh, those have been previously published. We don't need to read them all. Can we get a motion? Really glad I don't have to read them all. I make a motion <laughs> to uh, move the consent agenda. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Davis? Yes. At this point, we invite members of the public to address the committee. Assistant Administrator Barnett, do we have members of the public who wish to be acknowledged and to speak? I see no hands, um, Mayor. If anybody of the if any member of the public would like to address the township committee, please use the raise your hand function and we'll convert you to a panelist. Let's just give it a minute, just in case someone wasn't able to get over just in time. I don't see any either. So with that, we're gonna close the public comment opportunity here and move to adjourn and join us again on January 3rd, Tuesday night at 7.30. Second. Second. Mr. Adams. Yes. Ms. Kripe? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy last day of Kwanzaa. That's right. <laughs>